probably at some point consider doing a tour across Europe. And you know, that after you have land on the old continent, moving around isn't such a difficult task. Europe, at least the western and central parts, has some of the world's finest railway networks. They also have a plethora of regional low-cost airlines and inexpensive bus routes. But, crossing the ocean to reach Europe may be costly. So, to assist you in determining the cheapest gateways to the old continent, I utilized my years of airline experience to compile criteria and rates to determine what are the cheapest cities to fly to in Europe. However, the price of flight tickets fluctuates. Yeah, they fluctuate a lot. Airlines have an entire area called revenue management, just to operate the models behind ticket price. This is the area that I worked for years. For this reason, the cheapest city to fly to today is not necessarily the same to fly tomorrow. There are, however, some criteria that make certain cities, or rather certain airports, consistently cheaper than others. However, before we begin, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button so that YouTube can continue to show it to others. So the first criteria, airport taxes and fees. And this is the easiest to uh, understand why. Each airport operator is free to set its own fees, and each country has its own taxes, which are then added to the total price of a flight ticket. Some countries have very high airport taxes. The UK, for example, will not have many airports among the cheapest in Europe, because they have something called air passenger duty tax. It is charged from people flying out of the UK and has increased in value by 539 since its implementation in 1993. Second criteria, competition between airlines. There is also no surprise here. The greater the number of airlines serving a specific origin and destination, the lower the price. That's why, despite the relatively low income of the people, some airports in Africa are so expensive, particularly those monopolized by state-owned companies. Third criteria, competition between airports. Airports, like airlines, can compete between them. The presence of multiple airports in a single city may also result in one of them focusing on low-cost carriers. Fourth criteria, air chain rate. If a country currency is devaluated, fees and taxes, and even some airline tickets priced in the local currency will be cheaper when quoted in dollars or euros. So, with all the criteria clear, it's time to start the ranking of the cheapest cities to fly to in Europe. 7th place, Frankfurt, to the airport, Frankfurt Airport. The Frankfurt Airport is the third busiest in Europe, and by far the busiest in Germany. The city itself is not very touristy, but it's well connected by railway to most capitals in continental Europe, making it an excellent starting point. In fact, my second trip to Europe started in Frankfurt. Some of the cheapest flights from the United States to Europe pass through this German hub. From North America, you can expect flights below $1,100. The cheaper flights will have layovers, while the more, most expensive ones would be direct flights with Lufthansa, Germany's national airline. Sixth place, Milan, to the airports, either of Malpensa or Linate. Milan was one of Alitalia's two main hubs and is often less expensive than traveling into Rome. You can expect price around $900 for a round trip flight from major North American airports. Fifth place, Oslo, Norway, to the airport of Gardemoen. The good news for anyone going to Norway is that flights into Oslo are unusually inexpensive, around $750 departing from North America. The bad news, of course, is that certain items, well, almost everything, it's Norway after all, are extremely pricey once you arrive. Once, I booked a flight to Oslo for a really good price. I was glad for taking benefit from an incredible airline promotion. Later, I realized that the cost of staying for a few days in the city in a budget hotel plus the transfer to and from the airport was more expensive than the airline ticket itself. Fourth place, Lisbon, in Portugal, to the airport of Portela. Different than Oslo, Lisbon not only is a cheap gateway to Europe, but is also an expensive and splendid city to spend a few days at the beginning of your Euro trip. Flights should be around $700 departing from the US or Canada. Third, Barcelona, Spain, to the airport of El Prat. El Prat Airport in Barcelona has price similar to Lisbon. Albeit smaller than Madrid's airport, El Prat offers a few transatlantic flights of its own. It is served by all of Europe's main airlines, and from there, low-cost carriers like Vueling or Ryanair can transport you to other regions of Europe. Second place, Dublin, in Ireland, to the Dublin airport. 
Dublin is a low-cost destination from several locations in the United States. The lowest rates are usually around $700 depending on the airline and length of layover. A direct flight with Aer Lingus or Delta will cost somewhat extra. And there is so much to see and to do in and around the Irish capital with its superb beer. I visit the Guinness factory, it was a remarkable day. There are also medieval castles and a beautiful countryside. Just never mind the weather and ignore the constant drizzle. Dublin is also the headquarters of Ryanair, the leading low-cost carrier in Europe, in that you'll also be able to explore entire Europe from there, even though Ireland is an island. And now the first place, Reykjavik in Iceland, to the Kislavik airport. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly by the way. So why are flights to Iceland so cheap? The question becomes even more intriguing when one considers that, like Norway, Iceland itself is a very expensive country. But still, this is the cheapest European location to fly for most North Americans. Depending on the time of the year and where you fly from, you can expect to pay less than $600 for a round trip ticket. Here are a few reasons why flights to Iceland are so cheap. First, Iceland is very close to North America. Reykjavik, in fact, is geologically in North America. The European tectonic plate does not begin until roughly 30 miles to the east. Reykjavik is closer to Boston than California is to Boston. A non-stop trip from Boston or New York to Los Angeles takes roughly 7 hours. To Keflavik airport, it takes less than 6 hours. Since it's close to North America, cheap narrow-body plans like the Boeing 737 or the Airbus A320 have enough range to fly from North America to Iceland. Narrow bodies costs are around a quarter of longer range airplane costs, thus tickets can be significantly less expensive. And the third reason, flights to Iceland or Norway must be inexpensive. Almost nobody would visit there if the flight cost $1,000 or more, since everything else is so absurdly pricey once you got there. Have you ever traveled to any of these destinations? Let me know in the comments! I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Remember to subscribe to our channel for the next one.